Today, we have Dr. Chin W. Tan joining us. Dr. Tan has received Kyoto Prize in Advanced Technology. And today, we would like to ask him about his research. Dr. Tan, thank you for being with us today. First of all, congratulations for your Kyoto Prize. May I ask how you are feeling now? I'm feeling great. Mm. I'm feeling very honored. I'm also feeling very satisfied though, because of the recognition of my work on organic limiting dial or LED. For such a long time, you must have been working on your research. But since when did you think you want to be a scientist? Well, I want to be a scientist probably at the time I was in high school. Mm. I really did not do too well uh, in my uh, primary school or in the first one or two years in my high school. But in my third and fourth year in high school, uh, all of a sudden I became interested uh, in chemistry and physics. And I find it not too difficult, and maybe that's the reason I was interested uh, in that subject. Um, it seemed to be something that I like to do, and that's how I got started. As you studied <coughs> hard, did you feel you like physics and science? When you study hard, and the most important thing is that you begin to understand the principles. So in chemistry and physics, that if you understand the very basic principle, you can deduce it to, to the to a higher levels or to the related principles you don't have to memorize like you do in biology so that's why I was interested in chemistry and physics just because you once you understand the principle you can derive the equations the relationships and that make memorization not uh, necessary what you think the joys in conducting research at a company because you may have found it different from your current job at university. Uh, the, the joy of working for a company uh, is that you in research, uh, the research is very focused because the company has a problem to solve. Right. And so you do applied sciences mostly. Uh, but in my case, when I was at Eastman Kodak Company in 19, starting in 1975, the company uh, is, is a large company. And also the research uh, lab is very big. There's about 3,000 people there. So there's some the researcher in the company are focused in product development and some researchers focus in more advanced development things that are unrelated to the company product so I belong to the group that look at the future development so so even I was in the company I was able to do very um, uh, the research that is the more advanced mm. and even though it's a pride. So, so I, I was given the opportunity to do, you know, more advanced research unrelated to the product. Mm. So I don't have to be very focused on product development. So that, that gave me the opportunity to do something new. Mm. And that's how I discovered OLED. So the working environment was more f free, free, open. Very open, mm. very free. And also very important. While I was working on organic solar cell and organic limiting dial, there are other people in the company mm. working on related matters, you know, like synthesizing new materials, even for different applications, and putting the material in the 
application unrelated to solar cell and OLED. Like for instance, one application is electrophotography. Uh, you know the, the Canon copier? Mm -hmm. That technology we were, we, we were developing at the time at Kodak. So I took that technology developed for electrophotography application and apply it to the solar cells and later on apply it to OLED. So you have to be in a environment, in a situation, you have a large research lab, you're doing your own focus work, mm. but you also have to know what other people are mm. doing so that you can benefit from it. What are the things you consider to be important in your research life? Well, in my research life, uh, I mainly work on uh, two areas. One was solar energy conversions, and the second area is OLED, a conversion of light into electricity and from electricity back to light. So they are related. So the most important thing is that I was in, in able to make this important both are discoveries. And and the discovery came because I was able to explore uh, research uh, without a lot of uh, no uh, restrictions. Mm -hmm. I was in a big company. I was in a good environment that I just said. So it gave me the 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 environment to explore. But also I I tend to be very focused. If there's a problem in front of me and I want to solve it. Mm. Okay. I, I think about it at night, you know, all the time. Even I'm on vacation, I still, you know, think about it, and uh, and I, you know, try to make uh, observations and connections, and uh, so so those are the very important research uh, uh, capabilities. May I ask your message for the next generation researchers? The one quality uh, that you should, we, the research should have is the willing to look beyond what you're doing. Because, you, you know, most of the research that, uh, you know, you can only see so far ahead of you and you want to solve the immediate problems. Um, if you can solve it, that would be, um, you know, quite satisfactory. But as a young researcher, uh, you, you would need to have the skill. First of all, learn as, as much as you can. Not only chemistry, not only physics, not only electrical engineering, just trying to learn to build up your capability. And then you also have to see the connections. What is, you know, you can use physics to solve the chemistry problem. You can use the physics principle to apply to electrical engineering. So as a researcher, don't just go into just one single area. Okay, just look broader. All right. And uh, the researchers, you, you have in the academics, in the universities, and then you also have researchers in the, in the company. And in the, in the academics, you have to worry about publishing papers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you don't publish, you would not be able to be uh, maintain in the universities. In the, in the company, you have to worry about doing a good job and so that you won't get fired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, but I think as a young researcher, you should never worry about getting fired. Because you're so many years ahead of you. So if you, you started, you don't like it, move on to a different one. 
you know, you can fail many times before you succeed. I did a lot of experiments, many, many experiments, and it, it, won't, it didn't work. But you just have to keep moving on. So being a young researcher, be very persistent. Just focus to, uh, to solve the problem. And also important is that don't try to solve the easy problem first. Try to solve the big problem, the harder problem. Put it in front of you and always try to find a way to solve the hardest problem possible. So you have to be very curious and of course, eager. Eager, mm -hmm. yeah. Persistence, perseverance. You know, failure, always. Success, very seldom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you just keep going. Yeah, and yeah. don't be afraid. And don't be afraid. Keep trying. Because you cannot predict success. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. And don't try to make your career predicting the success. Because if it fail, you will feel miserable. Mm. If you prepare for failure, when it's successful, you feel very good. 